Dean, in trying to understand the nature of consciousness, we have to start with the brain because that's the generation of all the things that we talk about. But then how do we get this feeling of consciousness? I'm particularly interested in those materialists who see nothing other than the material world as the, as the totality of reality, but yet still have an element of consciousness that is that is that is real, that is is non-reducible, uh, and we call them so-called property dualists. They don't believe in a in in substances that are not physical, but there is this concept of consciousness that they're not willing to give away. Yes, I think it's a very natural position to want to hold. Um, you you examine the brain, you see all the stuff that it's doing, and you think, okay, where's the feeling of uh, heat? when I touch a, a stove, or where's the, where's the smell of, of uh, strawberries? It's not in there anywhere, it's something extra. Um, when you think about colors experienced, you can ask, well, could my color spectrum have been swapped? You know, when, when, uh, uh, you know whether you believe in God or not, you can use the, the, the uh, uh, metaphor at least. When God was creating me, couldn't he have swapped around the way colors are associated uh, with uh, uh, brain states and, and states of the visual system so that the colors are swapped? So when I see red, you're seeing yellow uh, and, and, uh, and so on. And, and bo yeah. but we're both calling it the Wait. same, so we think we see the same thing, yeah. but the, the experience is different. Yes, yeah, so Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, you know, yeah. imagine it was switched around the yeah. other way. Uh, uh, it seems like a possible way that things could be. Well, that requires that the feeling of that color, the experience of it, or the taste of uh, strawberries is something extra. It's very natural to suppose that the thing that experiences the taste of strawberries or that has these color experiences is just a material object made out of the same stuff that the stars are made out of and that the plants and the rocks are made out of. There's no extra thing, no soul. The, the problem with this view is, is that you still have to tell me exactly which physical thing I am. It's not enough to just say, I'm made entirely out of ordinary matter. I, I, if I am, then there must be some particular bit of matter that I'm made out of. And all the good candidates for being me are fuzzy, cloud-like things. There's this body itself, the whole organism. There's the brain that's inside of it. There's uh, the left hemisphere of the brain. Um, where am I in this story? Am I identical with one of these things? And if so, which one? Yeah, the, the argument, of course, is that uh, once you have a critical mass, uh, different things emerge. It's like uh, an atomic bomb. If you have uh, two pieces of uranium-235 and a certain weight, they'll be radioactive but inert, and you put them together, and it's just the same thing put together, and you'll have an atomic explosion because you hit a critical mass. So the argument is, is that when brain size and complexity gets to a certain level, you have new functions that emerge. Well, let's take the taste of strawberries. Suppose that's the new thing that emerges when you have a sufficiently uh, complex uh, brain in the very state which my brain is in when I taste strawberries. Right. Okay, so here's that s tasting strawberry-ishly. Okay, that's the property which is brand new. Um, now, that's a property that I have. Okay, I'm supposed to be a material thing. Which material thing has that property? Now, a very plausible kind of materialism will pick a very ordinary kind of object to be me. It won't posit any extra funny object like a special new particle that comes into existence when I taste strawberries. Mm -hmm. It's going to pick something like the whole organism, let's say, or the brain, something we all believed in anyway, and say, well, that's the thing that has this property. But when you look closely, these are fuzzy objects, their boundaries are vague. It's not, there isn't a very precise thing there. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things uh, with with fuzzy boundaries like clouds. When you look closely at a cloud, there's really a whole bunch of masses of, of vapor with bits that are partly in, partly out, and it's sort of indeterminate where the boundaries are, and we could just select uh, uh, boundaries. We could, we could make them more precise arbitrarily, uh, and we wouldn't be grabbing onto 
a less natural object. Similarly, where, where the brain is, um, there's lots of bits of matter coming in and out. Uh, there's, there's sugars being shuttled around mm. across the cell walls and things like that. Um, this is not a precise object, but if there are new properties of consciousness which are being generated, well, there have to be fundamental laws about these properties. The laws should tell us which thing gets them. But all the good candidates here are high-level, fuzzy objects. It would be very surprising if there were fundamental laws of nature about them. Uh, so do you have to postulate um, entities that are non-physical? Or why can't you just say that as you get to a certain level of complexity, you have something new that's emerging, that it's just part of the same system, it's just at a different level when you have a certain characteristics. Uh, it seems like to go to the requirement of something totally outside the physical world is, is, a, is, is a, a giant leap. Well, if it's part of the system, the thing that has the strawberry flavoring experience is a part of the system, you got to tell me which part. Which physical well, object it, is it? Is it a little part of the brain? If so, that's me. I'm a little part of the brain. And if so, which part of the brain? Uh, the, the reason that supposing I'm an extra thing doesn't seem all that far out to me is that uh, given property dualism, these experiential properties are brand new properties. They've, they haven't been in nature before. Um, where you have brand new properties, you, at the physical level, typically have a brand new entity. So if, if you manage to generate a particle that has a charge that no other particle has, you're not going to be surprised if it's a new kind of particle. If you generate a property that nothing else has had by getting brains to be mm -hmm. sufficiently complex, shouldn't we expect that there would be a brand new entity that would have this property? And, and your argument then is that uh, there is no other physical entity that we know of. Uh, but I, 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 are you not creating a straw man by requiring some new physical entity where most materialists don't claim that they need a new physical entity, even if they don't know what it is. They just say the current physical entity is, is, is good enough uh, once we understand it more. Well, if you're, uh, say, a functionalist about the mind, you think mental states really are just like computer states, mm -hmm. that our brain is like a computer and it's, it's running programs or something like that, um, then I think it's not hard to uh, find uh, uh, physical objects to count as the computer. And we could just choose a whole bunch of different candidates here. But if you think that uh, consciousness is an extra thing, um, you do have to pick uh, uh, ex a thing to be the subject of it. And a materialism that posits a, a, a precise physical object that is the subject for this experience is bound to be a kind of speculative materialism, mm -hmm. which is fine. But so far, we haven't found a good, precise candidate to be the physical object which is experiencing this strawberry flavor. And so, therefore, you would think it, it, it more uh, parsimonious to go to a non-physical object that we don't understand rather than to postulate some physical object uh, that, as of now, doesn't exist. It's a perfectly good research program to look for a special physical object that's getting the extra new consciousness property. But you don't believe they'll ever find it? Well, uh... I wouldn't say that, uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if they don't find it.